All right, so uh, we are on. Uh, I'm Sensei Mish. Welcome to Dojo Cast. I have Sensei Mark Klein. Um, that's that's your camera no, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case that was yeah. getting the glare off my head. <laughs> so uh, he is here in Vancouver. He came. We did a seminar yesterday in Oregon City. So um, not a big crowd, but it was uh, it was a good seminar. Good. good information. So. Uh, thank you for being on here. Well, I mean, forced. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing today? There's a hostage situation. Yeah. I was staying at the house. <laughs> Follow me here. No. Yeah. So, um, let's see. You are, uh, you've been doing Q show since what? 89? 1989. 1989. October 1989. But how long have you been, uh, training martial arts? Since I was 12. Since you were 12? I started wrestling first. Okay. And um, did that for seven years, high school, college. And then I dislocated my elbow. And yeah. I started, so I was used to grappling. And I started using the kicking and punching part to really to help rehab my elbow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and just, it stuck. <laughs> and I liked it. Right on. So. So what, uh, what first got you interested in, say, even wrestling? You said you started in 12. I don't know. Um, I played, I played football in eighth grade and, and ninth grade because the school system was seven, eight, nine, mm-hmm. and high school was ten, eleven, and twelve. So in the middle, of the junior high, uh, I played football that year, and then I wrestled. I don't know why. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember, but I think they would try out, so I went, and I'm like, I like this. Yeah. Well, I mean, like. Uh, um you know, Alexa's in middle school and it's just like they offer all these different things mm-hmm. so their kids just go along and try. And so that makes sense, you know. They didn't have, they didn't, there wasn't a lot of things offered. I mean, and you know, yeah. when we were younger, there wasn't as much <laughs> offered as, the, as there are today. I right. Mean, uh, so, I mean, I'm sure some schools have basket weaving classes right now, but. Right on. Now, um, when it comes to, uh, so you started in Q Show in 92. Or, ni- or, sorry, 89. I, I started in 1992, something like that. Um, what first got you, what kind of drew you into that? How did you, how were you first introduced? So in, well, I, I, I started, so, so I started Kyushu in 89, but I started Tang Soo Do 85. Okay. Uh, no, 86. And... I was I was still helping out with the wrestling and working with because we were a Division three school and we had some Division three national champions. Okay. We were hosting the Southeast Regionals at at the school and we hosted the the I think we and we hosted the NCAA the Division three NCAA's at the school. Okay. Uh, one year, so I was working the table. I was you know the clock everything. So I was I was involved in all of it. I had I had uh, dislocated my shoulder. I think it was the year before. And there was a, there was a martial arts supply school store near my house, and I used to just go in there and talk to her for hours. I don't know why. Just I'd go in just to hang out. We would talk and and um, but I and she had told me about the pressure point stuff. I didn't remember the names when she told me like George's name, George Dillman or Wally J, Remy Priestas, mm-hmm. and uh, so I was like, yeah, 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 and. She, uh, pretty much what everybody says in the, be- <laughs> in yeah. the beginning. Well, I think you know. some of them are still saying that now, yeah, well, <laughs> but so, that's a different story. So I came in and my arm was in a sling. Yeah. And I, I had, uh, separated it the night before and she said, what did you do? And I told her, she was, you want me to do shiatsu? I said, what's that? And she was, I told you about that. And she, she was actually, she, at one point she was a nurse. She ran a 52 bed medical unit in, in Staten Island and all this stuff. So she had, uh, I said, sit down. And I did. And took the sling off. And within 20 minutes, mm-hmm. I mean, I was in a lot of pain. I don't remember if they gave pain. They didn't, well, they didn't give painkillers as liberally as they do today. Yeah. And and uh, I was doing full shoulder rotations within 20 minutes. Wow. I mean, slow. But I mean, I, and literally, I couldn't even move. The swelling was, was it, it was bad. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I went home. My father was a doctor. And he said... I said, hey, Dad, look. And I showed him. And he goes, you can't do that. I said, I couldn't do it. He goes, what happened? I told him. 
And he goes, can she fix my arm or my hand? He had, he had like this, almost like a carpal tunnel type of thing, this tingling going on. Okay. And so I called her and we took, I took him over there. And it made a difference. And being, being a doctor, he had a hard time. Because back then, uh, chiropractic and massage, quacks. Yeah. And that was the standard. And uh, it made a difference, and it's, he, he, he didn't know what to say. So she lent me George's first four videos, or mm-hmm. she rented them out or whatever. And because um, he said, what are you doing? And I'm watching these things. And he said, why is that guy yelling? <laughs> I, said, I think that's how he talks. <laughs> I said, I don't know. I said, but he, he's making sense. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this yet because I was already doing kata. Mm-hmm. And because of the wrestling, I had more. I had lots of questions and they didn't like my questions. Right. I did a lot of push ups because I would ask a lot of que- I would, I would ask questions. I was a wise ass. Not much has changed. Yeah. And uh, don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Um, I just had so many questions about the katas and stuff like that that they couldn't answer. And then when I saw those videos, I'm like, hey, that makes sense. I want to meet this guy. And I went Mm -hmm. back and I talked to her. And um, Anita told me, you know, well, they're doing a seminar coming up. And and, uh, this was, I was 89. The first, she gave me a seminar for a flyer in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, which is an hour and a half from where I lived. Mm -hmm. And I went. And I said, I saw him hitting people. They falling down. And I looked. I said, "Can can you do that to me?" And he and he struck me right on the arm, which then I, now I know is lung five. And I woke up on the floor. Didn't necessarily hurt. All I remember is looking up, like, "What happened?" Yeah. And I was like, "Okay." I went home and I told my mother, who was a nurse, and she didn't like the fact that that this happened. But she she just, basically she just I think she knew me. She just don't touch your brother. <laughs> stay away, stay away from your brother. <laughs> and. Uh, I didn't listen, but yeah. <laughs> come here. I want to try something. So I've been doing that. I've been following, you know, this path ever since. Right on. So where are you? Uh, what do you have going on now? You know, I know that uh, you left DKI years ago, like a lot of other people did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, what do you have going on now? Well, I have. I mean, I've always had my own way of, of doing things and my own way of looking at it and, you know, taking in uh, and learning from everybody. I see somebody do something, you know, and I sort of put all this stuff together, something I call the Q-Show Institute. I have an online education program. Mm-hmm. And uh, here's a shameless plug. Uh, Q-Show. Oh, shame away. <laughs> shame and plug away. <laughs> Qshowinstitute.com. And um, uh, so... It's, I broke everything down, and this is, this is where I had a hard time, well, we can get into that afterwards, but um, I have that, I have a school in Piscataway still, mm-hmm. but not, I used to have between 200 and 300 students, Okay. and I was making good money, however, you know, uh, working my ass off, can I say ass? Yeah, you oh, can God, say whatever you, know, you want. Okay. So, um, I already did twice, yeah. so, so uh, <laughs> um I did it on national radio one time and uh, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Where was I? You were, um, uh, you had a school, oh, 200, okay. 300 students, but not now. So, but what happened was, uh, we were, I was probably doing, well, we were doing a lot. Mm-hmm. Let's put it that way. And it was costing almost 20 grand a month in expenses just to, you know, with with employees, with overhead, with everything else. And to be honest, I felt like a prostitute because in order to cover that, you know, you got to you, you just got to keep, you know, taking everything that comes in. And I got to a point where I hated it. And I I uh, I was trying to destroy it. Mm hmm. I didn't want to destroy it, but subconsciously I wanted to destroy it Mm -hmm. and just, you know, not kill it, but burn it to the ground and rebuild. Well, you know, I, I, I remember when you first came out here, I can't, whatever year that was, uh, it's been what, six, seven years. Um, and you know, I, we had, we were talking and I had told you my aspirations of, you know, wanting to open a commercial school and you're like, Oh yeah, that's funny. I'm actually trying to get out of a commercial school. And I was like, 
Really? <laughs> well, I talked. I was trying to talk you out of like yeah. doing that because yeah. like you're not gonna like it if you keep yeah. doing that. And and so now you know I have a small school, but I keep it because I want a place to film. Mm-hmm. I want to teach who I want to teach when I want to teach them, and you know I charge what I charge, and that's it. There's there's you know I I, I do a little bit more. I it, I cover my expenses plus a little bit, and that's it. I make money doing other things, and mm-hmm. and. Uh, um, it's much more enjoyable because now I don't have to, yeah, I still have to worry about covering the expenses. Not the same way. Mm-hmm. Much different. And, you know, when you have, you know, to cover $20,000 a month plus mortgage, right. you know, and, and everything else, uh, you know, that weighs heavy and you have to take anybody and everybody that walks in to cover that. Right. And, uh, and they sort of get that vibe, and they play the game. And I, I, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. It, it was I felt it was unhealthy, and and so you know you couldn't you know uh, contain that pace because even even you know even small schools they are personality driven. Yeah. And I, mean, I have to go to Italy in a couple of weeks, and um, I'm just closing that week. That's it. Yeah. Simple, because every time I go away, and if I leave somebody else in charge, you know the complaints are it's not the same, this and that. I said, Great, then I'll just close. I don't have to pay anybody to be there while I'm gone. <laughs> I don't have to worry about anybody getting hurt because yeah. nobody's going to be there, and right. I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, and and that's I've been open almost thirty years, and um, I don't think I've ever closed for a week in thirty years. Wow, a couple days here and there, but. So this is going to be like the first time that you're just going to close down? Yeah. Wow. And just, you know, I didn't want to because I was always worried and afraid that I would lose people. I would do this or that. And I understand that. You know, I look back now and I'm like, that was my own fear of doing that. And you know what? If they were going to leave, then it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. You know, everybody needs a break. And when you're open all the time, they, they, they don't come all the time. Right. So if they re- if I say I'm closed for a week, but wait a minute, you only come twice a week. You're only missing two classes. You haven't missed anything. We'll make them up when you get back. When I get back. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's just simple. So I just decided how to to change how I was doing things because I didn't want to. I was just getting burnt out doing that, and uh, I enjoy it much more now. Well, the, pre- the pressure is less as as far as as far as that goes. I totally believe in doing things that make you happy. I'm, I'm heading in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it many times. I, yeah. I think I told you the other day, this, doing this, if I could do this and teach, and of course, you know, live with my family, all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. um, that would be awesome. It's just making this pay. That's why you need to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and shame when I away. Monetize, yeah, shame away. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. So, so I, I know you go to Italy twice a year. Mm-hmm. Um, why do you go to Italy? The, the, why do you go to Italy? So we went, I, w- I used to do seminars with Leon J. Uh, back, was I first met Leon, I think 1990, 1989, I met him in, in uh, New England, somewhere, Massachusetts, Amherst College. Amherst. Okay. UMass Amherst, yeah, in Andover, uh, North Andover, and and so um, he just he was just moving after that seminar to uh, was at Wally J's uh, summer camp, mm-hmm. and so I met all those guys, had a blast, and and uh, he was moving to England, and yeah, we kept in touch, and then we started doing seminars together. I would go over to England for a week or so, and we would just travel around, and. Uh, Hit up different places, teach different places, you know, and just have fun. So one of his students uh, was from Italy. Okay. From a place called uh, Murano Laganare in the north near Udine. And <clears throat> he, they were having this, this group called Yosek Ambudo was having their annual convention. Not really a convention, but training, you know, because it's mostly a northern Italy thing. Okay. And, I mean, they have schools all over, but it was big in the north. And uh, so we got invited to go teach it. They said that you know, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you're not getting paid, but uh, they'll pay you all your expenses and you'll have a good time. We had a blast. Yeah. And um, I'd sign up for that. Yeah. <laughs> so we we uh, 
we went over there, and, and I still remember the people that mm-hmm. I met there, and some of them I still see. But, you know, I, I see a good portion of them, but, but some of the people, I ask about the ones that, you know, that hosted us, and, and uh, um, one of the guys spoke English afterwards, and, and I started speaking with him, and so I set something up where Leon and I would go. It was supposed to be twice a year. He would go one time, I would go another time, mm-hmm. and just do it like that. And they wanted us to sign an exclusive contract. I had no problem with that. Mm-hmm. He had a problem with that. Okay. So that part, sort of, to do that together fell apart. Right. So I just kept getting invited. So I just went. And I would go once a year or so, and you know, and then I saw. And again, he took me all around. And I've been working with some of these people for over twenty years. And um, uh, one, you know, one of my students, John Luca Frizan, he's been with me. 20 years he actually like i was telling you guys earlier yeah uh he was trying to help everybody get ready for orange belt okay and and uh, he was testing for orange belt too they all passed and he didn't <laughs> he didn't do the cotter right i it's just that was part of the deal <laughs> <laughs> and so we still joke about that and i remember because he said to me i was signing some stuff and he said uh, can i take a picture with you I said, yeah, and he had, he had long hair. Well, we both had hair, and, I, and long hair. But he had long hair and, and this, this, this thin beard and, and uh, very quaffed. And he said, can I take a picture? I said, yeah, and I had my arm around him. And I go, one, two, three, and I grabbed his hair, and I went, and I went like this. And you've seen that picture. <laughs> I, I have think. seen yeah. that picture. <laughs> that was from then. That was that time. That's cool. And, and uh, uh, I mean, just funny stories. We've been all over. He's been over here to the U.S., and... and, and uh, I'll have to tell you a funny story about how he almost ruined my school <laughs> when he came over here in 2008. Cultural differences. <laughs> so so uh, uh, and we just had a blast, uh, you know. And now he's right now he's on the cover of uh, Budo International magazine. I saw that picture. Yeah, that was that was really cool. And yeah. I mean, I've seen his daughters grow up, and I've seen, you know, just just all these different people, their kids born. This, I, I, it's just another family for me. Yeah. And extended family, and I've learned to speak enough to get myself in trouble. I can understand. I can understand more than I speak, but I can speak enough that I can just go there by myself and right do on. it all. And I, you know, and I know my way around. So, and it's funny. I'll be walking down the street sometimes in the town, mm-hmm. and someone will come by and go beep. Out, you know, I'll, they'll beep the horn out. They'll hit Maestro, and I'm like, and I wave, and I'm thinking, who was that? <laughs> 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 it's, just, it's just funny. That's funny. Yeah, uh, that's so. funny. There, there was, I hurt my back. My back went out of me one time before I went. Okay. And um, uh, they took me to this, the, John Luca took me to this doctor right around the corner from the dojo. And he was like an acupuncturist and a massage therapist. So I have a herniated disc, L4, L5. And uh, it only bothers me when, it's when I'm stressed out. So uh, the guy uh, brings me in. He has me do some exercises and stuff like that. And he and it's just very heavy uh, Italian accent. Your back is broke. And I'm, and I said, "What do I do?" He goes, "Exercise." You know, okay, very, very like, you know, cold and right. You know, okay, and stuff like that. So he goes, "You come back, see me tomorrow." Okay. So I came back uh, the next day. Then he did the same thing to me. He was throwing me around a little bit and just released a lot of the pressure on it. So it, started, it was starting to feel a little bit better. He takes me in the office because then he had to get my information. The only okay. thing, he didn't know my name, nothing, didn't ask anything. <laughs> he just had in the, uh, in the calendar, USA, okay. USA. All right. <laughs> that was it. That was all he knew. Um, and then he says, what is your surname? And I wasn't used to, you know, surname. I'm like, you know, S-U-R. Yeah. Okay. And sir means before. Right. So, which is your family name, which is supposed to go first, but here in this country, we do it last. Right. So, so, uh, um, and I said, Klein. And he says, Klein. He says, you're a Jew. And I'm thinking, here we go. <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah. And he says, so am I. I said, oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and it ter- turns out his mother, his, his mother or grandmother was a Klein. Oh yeah, living in New York City, but it was no relation. And, and you know, we talked for a bit, and, but but it was just funny that that came up, and I was just like, "Here we go, come on." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the accent and everything else, it just just you know, I was putting what two and two together and came up with seven, and I was obviously wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
That was just, that was just funny, and I, I like to tell that story because when everybody hears it, they're like, "No, yeah, he said that." And, you know, <laughs> and um, um, you know, that was that was 2006. That was the first time when so John Luca had set up his school in 2006, and then invited me over for a seminar, and. I mean, a group of us had left had left George. Mm-hmm. And I was the only one that left. Everybody else got kicked out. Okay. Uh, you know, and and and, um, and I didn't want to leave. I didn't. You know, I want. I was hoping everybody could work things out. And I'm really, and I'm still trying today to try to bring people together and and work with people and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I'll work with anybody. I, I don't care as long as long as you know they want to actually work together. That's right. That's the whole point. Um, and. Uh, uh, so in, in 2015, I started Q Show Institute, and uh, you know, I just keep. I have 492 classes online right now, um, and I'm gonna go home, start filming again. Yeah, everything I filmed here this weekend will be up, and I, uh, you know, there's all different elements of this. There's hundreds of hours worth of material that I have that I've amassed online not just for me but I mean I have some of your stuff on there from Kusha Corner and things yeah. like that and just it's this um, this massive library I don't want it to really and I really don't want it to be about me I never wanted it to be about me right and um, I don't want Klein clones never did try saying that ten times fast <laughs> so um, Klein clones yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely a tongue twister. Yeah, I got the bobblehead. That's enough. Yeah. Well, actually, your bobblehead. If you no, notice, I know, I can see it. I see it over there. It, yeah, he's fi- he's been fighting Darth Maul for, for a while. <laughs> it's better than what they did to him in Jim's cabin. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so with the Q Show Institute, where did? Um, I because I know you know you've kind of you you were doing DVDs for a long time. Um, and you know, I know you've kind of had, your focus has always kind of been, uh, kata breakdown based, mm-hmm. the Bunkai base. So where did the whole online process come from? Where did, where did you be like, okay, this is, this is where it is. Well, I mean, putting DVDs together is a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. And when um um it because it's it's extra couple steps and then there's the shipping and you could lose it and this and that you know it's all this extra these extra steps the other thing is you have to add in all extra money for shipping and and on top of that and you know so um it was one guy from scotland that that he wanted to order something but he says is there a way i can do it by download and so i just started investigating it i knew that Mm -hmm. was out there but the technology this uh, this goes back probably 10 years right but the technology wasn't out there yet Mm -hmm. it wasn't as as good as it is now right and so uh i started just looking into you know how to do this and i started with one okay and i already because all the files are already digital anyway that you had to put on the dvd and then you know so i was able to to put it together in a different way you know whether it was through vimeo or through uh, you know, d- just doing for DVDs first, right? And and, and since I already had them in digital format, I, I did it like that. I don't need. Do you have a DVD player anymore? Uh, I have a Blu-ray. Okay, but I do have I do have a physical DVD player. I don't. Yeah. I mean, there's one in my computer mm-hmm. because I have an older computer. But the newer computers, like yeah. remember when we went to the Apple Store a couple of years ago? Well, yeah, no, they took I, them out. I and and my laptop, the one that I use, it doesn't have one. Yeah. But to you know to to burn DVDs, like even when I put stuff up on, uh, well, it's not Create Space anymore, but to yeah. sell the DVDs on on Amazon, I burn a DVD just to make sure that it will work because mm-hmm. you know it's a double and triple check. Yeah. But that's an external plugin. That's not nothing. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I mean. Uh... Uh, and I have an older computer that has a DVD player, but I don't even remember the last time I put a DVD in it. Yeah. I mean, my my desktop at home, I, I use uh, I have Apple, uh, 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 the Mac uh, towers, mm-hmm. the older ones before they reformatted everything. Right. And I mean, these things are workhorses, and I have a couple of them, and, mm-hmm. and so I like doing everything on them. I don't even have the new. I know you have the new Final Cut. I don't even have that yet. Yeah. I'm happy with what I got, you know, mm-hmm. and I'll just keep working it until it dies, and then I'll replace it yeah so 
All right. So the last time you were out here, um, yeah. I'd... No, it wasn't the last time. I think it was like a couple. It was it was a couple times ago when we did your fifth dawn test. It wasn't no, the last time. no, no. It, well, for my for the fifth dawn test, that was that was in December of like God. I don't know. Actually, it says. 2013, December was, 2013. That was six years ago. That was a long ass time ago. Yes. I think that's. I think that was when. I think that's mm-hmm. when. No. The, the wall didn't exist then. Okay. I think it was either the last time you were out or the year or the time before. It was. It, so it was just. It was just, at least just, the time before, not the last time. So, yeah. but I remember you doing you. Uh, it was me and Thomas, and we opened it up to other people, but nobody else showed yeah. up. So we did a little Q show cast, mm-hmm. and uh, and you just stopped, and you looked at the wall, and you're like. I realized I don't want to be on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's because all these people, you know, that 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 you know, I've I've either known or read about or respected, are no longer with us. And I'm like, yeah. well, if I get on the wall, that means I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> so for for those of you who wonder, I'll put a picture of it. But I I actually I have this. I I basically kind of have a, a mural to well, not a mural, but different frames of different uh, people that have influenced me or influenced the martial arts or influenced me through martial arts who are no longer with us. So I call it, I kind of call it my hall of masters. Um, and so that's what, what he's referencing, but, uh, it was funny, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I try, um, you know, I try and give credit where credit is due, mm-hmm. you know, just like we were talking the other day about, uh, about George, you know, he started all this. Yeah. And if, and if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't even be kicking and punching because it was, uh, you know, I got into Taekwondo initially and, you know, I'm not being a competition person. I did do a couple of tournaments, but it just wasn't my thing. And it wasn't mm-hmm. until, you know, I was kind of on the like, yeah, yeah. And then, oh, hey, pressure points, real self-defense. This is in, in watching people drop, you know, just by touching them. I was like, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And that's kept me going. And that's, you know, gotten me into, uh, you know, meeting you and, you know, even uh, playing with George and Remy and, and, and Wally and all the different martial artists that I've that I've known that I've either met or met and I'm now friends with or I consider family. It's it really. Mm-hmm. George, that's all for you. I know you don't watch this stuff, but I'm giving you credit for that. <laughs> no, so, and, and you know what? And I still do. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I, we had a blast. I, I had yeah. such a good time. And you know what? Everybody's human and everyone makes mistakes. Everyone does stupid things. Yeah. And, uh uh, I'm not necessarily talking just about me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I wish things could have been different, but you know what? There does come a time that everybody's got to, you know, be an adult and do their own thing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. So hopefully George won't end up on the wall anytime soon, but when that time comes, I will make space for him up on the wall. Now, also when you were speaking earlier and we've, we've talked about this, uh, you know, your goals of making, you know, making Q show great again, you can put that on a shirt, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, um, you know, kind of, you know, even though there's still people out there who are, it's like, it's like, no, it's my way or, or no way. Mm-hmm. There are still a lot of groups where it's just like, okay, you know, you can be a member of our group and train with everybody. Yeah. But, um, I, I don't know. I totally believe that we, we should, it, you know, we can have different factions, but we can be all one again. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't have to be one person at the top of the... You're saying like be one with the point? <laughs> <laughs> Put that in a shirt too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, we can, we can all be friendly in the arts again mm-hmm. and not have this rift, you know? Yeah. The, the, part of the problem is, I think... Um, Everybody is trying to fish from the same pond, and it's a small pond. Yeah. And so, you know, and, they, and everybody thinks they're carving out turf. You know, I don't have any turf. Mm-hmm. I guess my house. That's my turf, sort of, depending on who you, how, how, yeah. who you ask. <laughs> and and um, 
and I think that was part of the part of the problem. You know, when, when I was in France, right after 9-11. Okay. Maybe, uh, I think the following year, so it would have been 2002, I think. I don't think it was 2001. No, it wasn't. 2002. And... We had at the end of training, we had uh, uh, dinner in this this uh, farmhouse. It was it was a some guy's um, first anniversary of of his farm. He had a wine farm. He had kiwis. He had all the stuff. Uh, look, you look out the window. The Pyrenees are right there. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, and I, I there was about twenty people there, and I got to know them over the course of a weekend. And and. Uh, um, not you know perfectly, but we sweated, we beat each other up, we laughed a lot, we you know we just and just spoke about everything, everything and everything. I thought I, so I said, let me take a chance to say something. Yeah. I said in the United States, they they try to our news media tries to make it out like the French hate us. Mm-hmm. I said, but I see warm people here who want the same thing that we want in our country, and they said we don't hate Americans, we don't like your government. Yeah, and then they said we don't like our government either. <laughs> I said, well, we're all in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. Everybody raised a glass. Yeah. I, you know, and, and, and that's really what it comes down to is because they don't represent us the way we think. And that's where, you know, the, you know, somebody in another country thinks the United States, they think this is the, and the way the government acts, that's how every single person in the United States is because the government is representing them. And unfortunately, on the face of things, they are representing them. They're just not doing it necessarily the will of the people. Right. And I, I don't care what party somebody belongs to that's irrelevant they're just overall not doing what we ask them to do mm-hmm. but they don't have to because they're a private corporation yeah <laughs> so <laughs> totally different podcast <laughs> right <laughs> yeah no i'd i'd like to i'd like to actually what i what i would love and uh um this would take gobs and gobs of money and i know that you're kind of working on your own little thing of doing something uh, along these lines but yeah i would love to have just a huge seminar and in a way the thing in uh jim corn's thing in uh, in september is going to mm-hmm. be a step in that direction because uh you know i know you're going to be there he's going to be there of course because it's his place but he's bringing in people from uh denmark denmark germany and- Probably Switzerland. Yeah. Maybe Norway, some people come in. I'll see some of them, so I'll find out if they're... I'll see them in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I'll see if they're going to come. And then... Uh, um, and so you've got uh, Oaken and Circle. You've got, uh, you know, Kyushu Institute. You've got uh, those other groups over there. I don't know if they're specific groups um, that are associated with anybody, but then... I don't think so. But then... Uh, um, I don't know who told me this or where I heard this, but uh, uh, David Hogan is supposed to be there. So you've got... I don't know David was coming. He's coming? Oh, good. That's what I was told. Okay. Uh, I, I, don't, so. I don't know. I hope, I, so. I hope so, too, because I plan to be there. So, um, but you have, you know, representatives from all the different Kyushu mm-hmm. organizations coming together and sharing and playing. My goal with some other projects that I'm working on that, that you and I have talked about is to take the money part out of it Mm -hmm. so that everybody could possibly get paid Mm -hmm. that we think is worthwhile to 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 be there right and make it simple that way there's no bs nobody can argue about anything you know and stuff like that there there was we we were all uh george wally and remy were teaching at karate college 1994 down in virginia okay and um each one of them was get was getting paid a thousand dollars at the time and uh, so I, I went over to uh, to Wally, figured I would just key him up a little bit. I, I said, you know, I, I said, George did an extra session. I, 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 said, uh, uh, I said, you guys are getting paid 1000 each, right? He goes, yeah. I said, well, George is getting, I think, 1500 <laughs> He only taught for about half an hour extra or something like that. And next thing you know, Wally just turned and started walking towards George's room. <laughs> he was going, what's going on? What is it? And, and then, then uh, and he realized I was, I was busting his chops, and, and uh, we all had a big laugh out of it. That's funny. <laughs> well, you know, I think, I think that, uh, you know, if, we, if, if people continue talking about, you know, and making peace is not the right term, but, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, even when I did uh, episode 100, the, the knockout episode, I mean, I reached out to mm-hmm. people from all different organizations and most of the major ones responded back. 
and I sat down and I talked with them. And the, you know, the, there was one organization that reached out was like, Hey, thanks for promoting Q show. But, uh, yeah, because you're not part of our organization, we're not going to, we're not going to participate. Not every person was into that. Yes. (laughs) And so it's just like, really? Seriously? You know, see what I did? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And so, uh, I couldn't um, resist. That's okay. But, uh, but I still had, you know, you know, big name people, you know, I would have loved to have actually interviewed George, Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, the whole, uh, the whole thing that's, you know, the whole, uh, um, national geographic thing, but Chris Thomas, he and I sat down, you know, in person digital, but, uh, sat down in separate places together. There we go. (laughs) Um, but yeah, we had a great talk, you know, and, um, no, he's, he's, he's actually a really good guy. I spoke to him probably two years ago and, uh, maybe three because I, I wanted to try to put something together at this big, uh, place in, in, uh, Indiana. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I think because there was, there was a lot of, there's a lot of Q show people in that area. And I think, and there's some very good people you know, uh, instructors. Right. And I think it would be as a, as a centrally located place. I think it would be good. You know, I think we'd be able to get a good turnout if they would, if everybody would play nice together and, and, mm-hmm. and cooperate and bring people. Yeah. And, um, that, that could possibly be a, be a, a, a good place to do it because it was, it was what they call this one place, the eighth wonder of the world. Okay. And it's this giant dome, which is a hotel and spa. And it's, it's unbelievable. And the hotel next to it was where Al Capone used to party. Oh, and cool. uh, yeah, so it's 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 beautiful place. They and they have uh, ballrooms there. They have, I mean, top name. You look at all the people on the wall. Uh, their wall, there's people are still living, right. and and they have them. <laughs> they show who who has performed there and stuff like that. And um, uh, and I was like, so I started thinking. I started and I started working on it. I just couldn't get the cooperation of people, you know, at the time. Everybody wanted this and they wanted that. And so I said, okay, let me, let me, this is more of a longer term project. And I'm getting closer to being able to have the funding done mm-hmm. so that that's not an issue. So. Yeah. I really hope that it, uh, that it, it, it would be cool. I think it'd be re- because, you know, I know most of these people personally mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, and we had a lot of fun. A lot of partying, a lot of, you know, just, just laughs and sweating well, and hanging out. Well, I remember some of the big threes I went to. Those were, those were really, really fun. I think that yeah. was the first one that I met you at was the, the one in Houston in 94. Mm-hmm. He grabbed my hair, by the way. That's why it's shorter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you had this spiky hair. It wasn't that. Oh, it, yes, it, it was. It was the, picture, it the picture, you had this, this spiky hair with a, with, when we talk. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was short enough for people not to grab, but Mark proved me wrong. Because you got to so, go in and let it get stuck in here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then it got shorter than that. <laughs> and that's why I'm like now. However, I have considered, I thought about growing my hair out, but my wife is like, no. She's like, you don't want me to have like longer hair, you know, just maybe put it up in a man bun. I no, can, don't I do can, that. No. I, can, well, I can walk around. Well, no. Top knot. We'll keep, we'll keep the woke terms out, but then, <laughs> but uh, she's like, no, no, they, no. Your whole family will make fun of you. Oh, I I know repeatedly. I know. Yeah, more but see, so then, than they do now. Well, you know, I I never thought about having like super long hair, like the um, the the ultra was it ultra spiritual the JP guy that oh, we, yeah, that yeah, we ran yeah, into. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy. So, yeah. So. Uh, um, <laughs> So yeah, so we're in downtown Portland today, um, and we went down to Cinco de Mayo, and and we were leaving because we had to go pick up my daughter at uh, volleyball, and we run into JP. He's the uh, he's the the that guy that guy. Well, it's funny because I see him and he's walking towards, and we're you know we're doing this cross, and I look at him, and I was like, I know that guy, I don't know his name, and I was like, Hey, wait a minute, aren't you that guy? And he's like, Yes, <laughs> and I'm looking at him, and I know him too, and I'm like, Yeah. I don't know what you've been on, but you're doing yeah. something. And I, 
I love his, you know, I love his work. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just can't remember. He's like, yeah, JP. And I was like, yes, yes, you're right. And it's, it's like, so very cool guy. I got, you know, did a picture with him. But And now uh, he's telling everybody, I had two fans come up to me. I have no idea what I do. <laughs> exactly. Well, even, <laughs> even as, you know, and I'm not, you know, a, a super, super fan, but I know his work, mm-hmm. but still I felt stupid not going, God, I, I know he's been, you. and I've seen him in some. Yeah. Uh, I've seen him in some other things. I think he's done some some Scott Trade or E Trade commercials or so. He's mm-hmm. been on. I think he's, he's done some commercial stuff too. Yeah. So, but funny guy, nice guy in yeah. real life. Oh, yeah. Super nice guy in real life. So, but uh, that was our little uh, left turn at Albuquerque. But uh, no, I'd like to. I'd love to see a. Um, uh, you know, some setup where mm-hmm. we can get all the Q show guys together and I th- I just think, you know, I think re- re- remove the politics, you know, um, I know money has to be part of it because, you know, even being in Indiana, you know, it costs a few hundred dollars to fly out there, you know, mm-hmm. and of course stay, but, um, uh, but I think I can, I yeah. think I can get that handled. Yeah. So, but I think you'd have a lot of, you know, you'd have a lot of people, mm-hmm you know, coming just because it's like, Oh, you know, I've, I've always wanted to train with that guy. I've always wanted to see that guy. And then, you know, coming out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like when I went to Indiana and I had reached out to, to, um, uh, Jim Corn about, you know, doing the, you know, the, uh, knockout episode and doing an interview for that. He's like, well, why don't you come on out? And I, you know, you guys know, you guys have been doing it for a Mm -hmm. few years now. And I was like, Oh, and he's like, yeah, no, come out and, teach a, teach a session and, and we'll d- sit down and do an interview. Cause all the other stuff, I don't know what, you know, the FaceTime stuff, I don't know what, what you're talking about there, so, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, in, in all the years that I had been going to different seminars, I'd never met, I never met him. And he, he wasn't in, in Texas when you were there. If he was there, I don't remember. Okay. I, I remember, I bet he was there. He, well, he probably was. But I mean, I remember you specifically. I remember Bill uh, Bill Birch, mm-hmm. um, of course. You know Wally Remy and and George, and then there's you know a couple other people. But I don't ever remember. There was 300 people at that one. Yeah, that was huge. Mm-hmm. That was huge. That's oh, Texas. Everything's big in Texas, <laughs> from what they tell us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah, so that was. Uh, um, but I had never met him personally. And so it was really, it was, I thought it was a, it was really great sitting down and, and getting to know him on a different level. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. You know, so, and then, and pretty much everybody that we run in, you know, that I run into in, uh, in, uh, the Kusha world is well, a super Wait till you nice meet guy. some of the guys from Europe. Oh yeah. No, I'm, know? I'm totally and, down for that. And Harvey had a chance when Harvey came with me to, to, uh, Italy in, uh, last November. Right. And he just had a blast. And I mean, and they, they just, you know, embraced him like, like he was family and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Harvey. <laughs> His name is no longer Harvey. It's Harvey. Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> I got used to it. The first couple of times they said it, I was sort of laughing. And I'm like, ah, okay, it's your new yeah. name. <laughs> yeah. So next time, uh, oh, well, he'll probably watch this. I could, I, I could edit it out. But if when he and I sit down for a podcast, I'll be like, "Yes, this is uh, Sensei Harvey." <laughs> <laughs> and if he shows up at a different time than me, yeah. we'll have a sign for him. Yeah, in oh. Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so on that, uh, uh, Jim Corn sends me. You know, I, I'm texting him, and he he says uh, he says that he's going to show up and. When he picks up Mark at the airport with, you know, welcome home, to, you know, welcome to uh, welcome, welcome home. home from prison, Mark Klein. Um, <laughs> and I said, hey, if you do it, I, if you do it, I want a picture. And of course, the next thing that comes up on the Internet is a picture of Mark with Harvey with welcome home from prison, Harvey Honda. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened and, was Jim's brother wouldn't do it. Yeah, I'm not doing that. And and because uh, I said that I sent Jim a message from Chicago because I was I was changing planes there. Yeah, I wanted to see who was picking me up, and and I said I said who's picking me up and will there be a marching band to greet me? Yeah, because and, and my brother with the sign that says "Welcome home from prison, Mark Klein." I'm like, oh, <laughs> and, and I think it was Richard. Remember Richard? Yeah, Smith? I think it was his idea. 
Yeah. I think so. So, so, uh, um, Brian said, nah, I'm not doing that. So Jim, we had Dwayne's truck and, and, uh, you know, we went to pick Harvey up at the airport. It's about mm -hmm. mm, 45 minutes away from, from, uh, uh, Jim's house. So he, uh, I said, Hey, when we get there, he goes, well, I don't have any cardboard. I said, well, no, nah, we'll just, let's, let's do it to Harvey. You know, let's, let's, well, as we walked in, I said, let's go to the Hertz rent a car counter mm -hmm. and ask her for a piece of paper and some markers. And we, she, we told her what she want, what we wanted to do. She goes, oh, sure. That'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we asked for that in Newark, they'd be like, oh, we can't do that. Or, you know, they'd probably yeah. like freak out. And, um, you know, she was more than happy to do it. And so we did it. And then we, we stood there and, and some guy was looking and he goes, hey, that's pretty funny. Yeah. He goes, I'd like to do that to my daughter. <laughs> I said, well, she'll give you paper over there. <laughs> and um, uh, so when Harvey came out, he just started laughing. And then uh, he goes, paybacks. And I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> so... Miss greeted me with a sign. Yeah, uh, no, Harvey, back Har from... Harvey challenged me. And so I uh, <laughs> was it welcome, uh, welcome home, Mark Klein from St. Mary's Sperm, Sperm Donation, Donation International. <laughs> so, uh, so I guess there will be Klein clones around somewhere, right? Yeah. Hypothetically. Well, uh, <laughs> it's just a sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a sign. Good. I'm glad you clarified. Yeah. That. But uh, yeah, no, we, uh, we've been talking that that might just become... A thing. I can't wait to pick somebody up at the airport. Yeah. I might just invite somebody just so I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, so for the whole journey on that, there is a video. I posted it. So if you're watching mm -hmm. this a year from now, just search on my thing and because you have subscribed and uh, and you'll you'll watch it's a good five minute video. So. Well, no, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to. Uh, um, September. Mm -hmm. So already thought about, uh, um, I've been kind of toying about doing different, you know, uh, actually teaching something Q show Q show. Um, cause when, uh, when, uh, um, Jim had me, when I went out there last time, Jim was like, I was like, Oh shoot, you know, what do I teach? I don't know what to teach. It's like, oh, I've only got this show where I teach pressure points. I mean, I could probably do that, <laughs> Duh, you know? And, uh, um, but, uh, but I was like, okay, well, I've been, i you know, I, I had my focus right then had been a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, um, the, uh, Bram Frank modular stuff. So I was like, oh, you know, is, is it okay if I teach knife? And he goes, yeah, as long as you throw a point in there, I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> well, you touched any, somebody. So, so, points anyway, so, yeah. So I, uh, so, you know, I threw in, uh, threw in some points into the thing and, and actually kind of sparked an idea of other stuff that, mm -hmm. that I want to do because, um, you know, we could, uh, Bram always ta talks about his, his art being biomechanical cutting and we're, you know, we never really train people to go to jail per mm -hmm. se. So it's like, okay, well, if I'm going to cut and if I'm going to, if I need to follow up with a strike, I might as well use pressure points. So I think that's where, uh, where I'm going to focus on that part of what mm -hmm. I do. So we also thought about in the last episode or last, uh, cause we've actually filmed season five or first part of season five, but, uh, I got an idea for doing, uh, um, uh, uh, crimp and pressure points mm -hmm. or crimp and Q show or crimp or Q show crimp. I don't know. I'll have to play with the name, but that's, tough. Uh, that's a tough one. Yeah. Say that 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crimp, Cusho, crimp. Yeah. Two well, I don't know. It's days. well, it, at least it's a K <clears throat> and a C because I had, I, I had once thought about putting a sign outside saying karate, Kyusho and knife. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mm. really work. I don't think Lisa would like that either. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah. There was, there was a, a, a supermarket in Finland. Yeah. I, I don't know how to say it in, in uh, Finnish. Yeah. But the letters that they had up on the front was KKK. And I said to Tara, I said, my God, they have their own, their own supermarkets. <laughs> and, and he was like, what? And I pointed it out and he just started laughing. He just he started cracking up. Yeah. That was funny. Jeez. Well, I, <laughs> if I called mine like uh, Klein's uh, uh, Q show in karate. Oh, yeah, That wouldn't go. work either. No, that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. Could you imagine KKK? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, that would be adverse advertising. Yeah, <laughs> I actually wanted to. There, there was. Uh, I, I thought about this, just joking around. What if I paid people? Uh, they actually do that now politically mm -hmm. to picket outside my studio 
just so people go, what's going on over there? Ooh. Just so they would talk about it. Maybe marching with signs, saying something. I don't know. I could give them something to get mad at me about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not too bad, but just something ridiculous. <laughs> I, you know, but I said, no, I can't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> would have been funny, but. <clears throat> and, you know, it depends on, you know, you could uh, just, you know, uh, grab a certain group of people and I don't know. Klein's, Klein's Kusho and Karate. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <clears throat> now there was something else uh, that that kind of sparked, but it it disappeared. Um, but it was kind of on the whole uh, the whole naming thing when it when it comes to that. But um, I guess it wasn't that important, so I forgot it. So, um, well, what is uh, you know that whole thing of what's in a name? Oh, yeah, you know, one of my a student of mine. From and I, and I, 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 he doesn't train anymore. He'll be what's today? Fifth. Yeah. He'll be. I think. 70, Revenge of the fifth. Yeah. He'll be seventy-five on on uh, Tuesday. Okay. He started training with me when he was forty-nine, and he says, "What?" Do, and, and I was twenty-five years old, and, and he mm-hmm. said, "What do I call you?" I said, "You can call me Mark. You can call me Sensei. If you call me Shithead, I'm going to get annoyed." Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> and he, look, he goes, "I think we're going to get along." Yeah. And, and we've been friends for thirty years now. Yeah. No. That's <laughs> so. <clears throat> cool. The, uh, um, um, see another thing. Oh, you know, okay. So, uh, the term left turn at Albuquerque, what's the first thing you think of when you hear that? My smart ass reply was, why are you blaming people in Albuquerque? (laughs) Okay. So, um, I, uh, in, in a, my first, my first pot, my, my first podcast I had, um, uh, Dan Anderson. And that's just a term he uses to change a topic in conversation. Okay. Let's take a left turn at Albuquerque and boom, conversations change. We're on to a, a new subject. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a super geek. I mean, when, when it comes to Star Trek, I am, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I watch cartoons and read comic books and all that kind of stuff, but I've never been like super, super into it. So, I, I'm, I'm down in the, uh, I'm down in Eugene at the knife show, uh, with Bram Frank and we're talking about something. And I, I say, Oh, a left turn at Albuquerque. He goes, Oh, Bugs Bunny. I'm like Bugs Bunny. What do you, and he goes, yeah, left turn at Albuquerque. That's Bugs Bunny line. Really? Yeah. And I was like, hmm. seriously? He's like, no, no, look it up. And so I just, you know, get on YouTube and I search, you know, Bugs Bunny left turn at Albuquerque. And there was a video and it was, it had, it was just, um, you know, uh, clip after clip after clip if where I'm Bugs Bunny, it. you know, he, he, you know, you see the little mound go and he pops up and he's like, oh, I'm not where I should be. And he pulls out a map and he goes, oh, I must, I should have taken a left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> I remember that now. And I was like, and I watched it and I was like, I, I now remember that, but I always associate Danny mm-hmm. with that. But it's like, it's like, oh. I always use a W sirloin of beef, and, and, and there was that, and there was, uh, um, oh man, there was another one I used to use. I just, I just use it every time I take the kids. If I have to, if the kids give me their belt to help them put it on, it's, it's mm-hmm. folded. And I say W. I just, I, I do that. And they, they look at me. I say, it's Bugs Bunny. Yeah, there was another one I did, but I can't remember what it is at the moment. I don't know. I think oh, they... oh, you're not ugly. You're a beautiful monster. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? You know, I, like, I've, I've heard the term. Would you like? Uh, would you like any sugar? How many lumps would you like? Oh, three or four. You know, bang. bang. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Pete Puma. Pete Puma. Yes, Pete Puma. And and the, and but then I'm gonna love him, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I re- I remember I remember that. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's funny. No, but it's 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 funny that I couldn't remember that. But I do have those lines that I reference and, you know, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's funny and I, and I don't know if everybody does this, but I know that the people that um, I have in my life do this where they basically, they'll use lines from other movies to reference other things. Yeah. You know, just because that's, that's become it part fits, of our culture. Yeah. It yeah. Fits it and- yeah. But the whole left turn at Albuquerque, I just did not make that connection until... Well, you were saying was... earlier with the kids, you know, at, at one time at band camp. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody, everybody does it. My brother used to quote movies like constantly. Mm-hmm. 
for no reason whatsoever other than to just say something. <laughs> <laughs> See, one of those guys that just can't be quiet? Depends. <laughs> yeah. I don't th- I've, I've never met Jay, so I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But, uh, um, but yeah, there's, uh, you know, because there's a, a guy I know, his pretty much every reference is a movie reference. <laughs> And when I uh, when I teach stuff at the hospital, I'll I'll and I, pur- I I I purposely say things because I know it's almost like a little internal joke for me because mm-hmm. it's like okay, I'm I'm teaching this class for the umpteenth time, and you know because it's it's you know uh, just a certain I, I can't really go off on the curriculum because it's set, but I'm just going to throw in these little jokes. And see if anybody gets them. Mm-hmm. And then if I see a smile, right on. Yeah. So it's almost that little internal. Little, well, it's it's kind of makes it. It yeah. kind of makes it fun. Yeah. Um, one of the ones. One of the things we did. We we did a. Uh, um, uh, uh, it's an audio an audio thing. So you uh, you put on a headset and you know the person is telling you that you're not you're not uh, uh, you're not special and you don't need help and basically trying to kind of uh, it's a uh, distraction test so they have the, they're listening to the voice and then you're sitting there asking them questions like you know what's your name all that kind of stuff so we were reading um we were reading through the questions that uh um that are uh, you know the the head person had kind of put together and the, one of the first things that popped into my mind is like you know what is your name what is your quest what is your favorite color <clears throat> and so so you know i was just like you know i'm just gonna you know, the one thing that I could kind of do on my own was, so I just kind of changed the questions. So it's like, okay, why are you in this class today? What's your name? What's your favorite color? Mm -hmm. What's the, um, uh, airspeed velocity. What's the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Coconut laden swallow. No, it's just unladen swallow. We'll have to double check. Because I remember I I played it back and forth to get the unladen swallow. But regardless. But why would it uh, be unladen? It would just be a swallow. I don't know. Is a coconut laden swallow? Well, that makes sense. I don't know. But that's so. So anyway, so I listen. I listen to that line. And of course, the response is African or European. That's right. Okay. So, um, uh, and usually a lot of people are like, what? But you get that one person who, you know, who's, who's able to kind of focus through and knows it, be like African or European. <laughs> well, I was, I was, like, I was in a ba- we were playing baseball one day. We had a double header yeah. in between games and he was hot yeah. and we're wearing polyester, which makes yeah. it worse. And, and, uh, this one guy says to me, he goes, Hey, do, do you know what the, the BTUs are on this one air conditioner? I'm looking at him like. I think I'm pretty smart. I said, but I don't know anything about what you're talking about. I said, yeah. I can't answer that question. I said, but I can tell you the airspeed velocity of, an, of, a, of a coconut laden swallow. <laughs> and the guy is sitting against the tree and he's just going, he goes, would that be African or European? And the two of us are cracking up. He had no clue what we're talking about. And it just. <laughs> yeah. But see, it's movies like that, that, y- you know, you and I have grown up with yeah. that people just don't see anymore because they're old or they offend people which i don't know when it's coming out um they're going to uh um, they're going to put it back out as like a 40th anniversary um uh airing of uh, the life of brian yes i heard about that so it's like it's like another movie that will be banned <laughs> i want them to redo blazing saddles oh. just change the roles make the make the sheriff a white guy this time oh <laughs> oh, you know of all the of all the movies that they have not banned, I'm really surprised that that movie has not I been know. banned. I, it's on Netflix. I think I watched yeah. it recently. Yeah, just I I saw it. and I'm like, I I want something mindlessly stupid, but it's also funny and yeah. And we have to laugh at our differences. Not I'm mean, look. I, I'm not I, I'm not agreeing with a lot of that you know stuff, but we also have to laugh at some of the things because it's the tables are the table the, there are forces trying to turn the tables on us when, mm-hmm. when uh, you know we can fix things without having to just hate and you know hate in a different direction right so. yeah I think you know laughing at ourselves like you said laughing at our differences if people just learned how to do that more oh you know, like the story I told you about Lowe's. Yeah. You know, 
Should I tell us? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, it's it's uh, this whole thing, you know, white, black. It, so one day I was at Lowe's. I decided to see, I know I'm not white. So I decided to go to the color chart section in Lowe's, the paint chip section. And they have color chart or the paint chips or the, you know, the colors on pieces of paper with a hole in the center. So I went there and I actually did a Facebook Live video where me and, and, and uh, this girl that helps me film, Lori, we, we were trying to see what color we actually were according to Lowe's paint charts. <laughs> I love and it. And I'm bubble tea. So I represent the bubble tea nation. Yeah. So I grabbed a whole bunch of colors. And I put it, and I took them with me, uh, samples. And I was in the post office one day, like I don't know, a week or two after that. And uh, there was me, some old woman, and a black woman over here. And uh, I don't say African American. I have permission to say black. And uh, so, so I'll get to that too if you want. But, but uh, see, the 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 um, uh, I asked this this the black woman because she looked like she had a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you tell me what color I am? And the, the old woman over here is going, oh, God. This is the, no, she, she, you could see her just like tighten up. And, I, and, and, and the black woman looked at me and I pulled out a paint chip. I said, I know I'm not white. And I held up white. I said, so I can't be white. And she says, where are you going with this? <laughs> and I said, I think I'm bubble tea. And I, and I held up the bubble tea one. She goes, yeah, that pretty much matches you. Then she saw I had some brown ones. Uh-huh. And she goes, Let's see if you what you have matches me. So now the two of us are sitting there going like this, holding stuff up. I think she was like some kind of Santa Fe brown or something like that. I mean, it was you know. So so, and yeah. I even told her. I said, "Black people don't exist." I said, "You really? You can tell everybody you're Santa Fe brown." Yeah. And and she started laughing. I said, "And we need to celebrate our differences." And the old woman was not sure what to do about this, but then she wanted to see if we could if we had anything to match her. <laughs> and, and so it turned out to be something really funny to mm-hmm. do, and and. Um, uh, so I, I was one of my students. One day I was talking and I said African American. He goes, "Bro, I'm black," mm-hmm. you know, and stuff like that. And he goes, "Don't separate this and that." And he goes, "And he goes, you're not even white. You're Caucasian." I said, and "I said, well, then you really wouldn't be black." Mm-hmm. And he goes, "Well, he goes, but that's what that's, I'm comfortable with that. And I'm okay with that. So yeah. that means that's why I had permission. I was yeah. telling a joke one day. Oh yeah. I wanted to black people around and I said black. They all like looked at me. I said, "Don't worry, I got permission." And I just kept going, and they were all like. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah. I didn't miss a beat. And, they, you know, and I thanked them all and I left. Yeah. <laughs> I think some of them are still annoyed at me, but I don't care. Yeah. No. Well, you know, on the on the whole black thing, I'm, you know, yeah. I don't know what, uh, I don't know if I'm bubble tea or not, but. Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to. We can to, go to Lowe's one day. No, you have to yeah. go there. <laughs> you know, we'll have to see. just do the, I think. And was it a Lowe's challenge? I wanted everybody I, to go and just do I, it. I think you know. I think we I think need they to. They should do it. I think we need to bring it back. Yeah, we'll bring it. We'll 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 figure out something. But uh, uh, and actually, I think when you when you did that, I told my wife I was like, we got to go to Lowe's or Home Depot and just grab. It. And she's like, she's like, why? And I was like, well, this Mark Mark did this and it was really funny and and I think it would be kind of cool just you know just and she's like, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I my wife fun. loves me, but, but, you know, on the whole black thing, Lisa, she's like, no, I'm black. She's like, I'm not African American. She says, I was not born in Africa. I was mm-hmm. born in California. And, um, and so from, from her being just so emphatic about that. And for me, you know, I, I don't know. I think the, the whole African American term that's been, that's, it's, I, like, I, it's like Italian I think, American, Jewish American. Yeah. I, what am I? I'm am I German American? I'm a you know, I'm a fifth generation. Yeah, me too. You know? I don't know what we are. I, yeah. 1908. Yeah. Uh, so. So I think on the like I'm a what a I think according to my mom it was like I'm like a sixth or seventh generation Oregonian on her side, but when I go to the handworker side I'm a fifth generation handworker, but America. So mm-hmm. I don't America. I don't really have any identification with Germany. You know, besides, I don't play a very good bad guy. So, you know, <laughs> that's a whole different story. But with the, with the whole black thing, I, it's like, okay, you know, it, and, and I get that. And I actually got in trouble at work once because I tried to, you know, I tried to uh, argue the fact that, no, this person, you know, like if, if, if you were black and you say, look, I identify as an African-American. Okay. 
I, you know, I'll honor that if you want to, that's, that's cool. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't care, but I'm just not going to use that term because it is more politically correct because yeah. being politically correct is bullshit. So, um, uh, but I, I, tr- I tried to, I tried to argue the fact that, you know, okay, that Egypt is in Africa. So really, yeah, if you're born in the country of Egypt, you're Egyptian, but when you want to look at the continent, they're African. Yeah. And if you, so you have e- Egyptian come to America, become an American citizen. Well, he's an African American. But he doesn't look like I gotta, all the other stereotypical African Americans. Well, get this: this girl I was sitting on a plane with, going yeah. to Czechoslovakia a couple of years ago. She was originally from Ethiopia. She had this beautiful skin, this beautiful skin color. It wasn't black, and it was it was it was it was almost like copper. Right. Okay. It was orangey. Yeah. And I, and I, I said, I said, where are you from? And she told me, and she came over. She was, uh, I think, about thirty nine at the time. And she she uh, she'd been in the U.S. since she was fourteen. Mm-hmm. When she went to college to apply for financial aid, and they gave her you know what race and stuff like that, she put down African American. Mm-hmm. And there was a black girl behind the counter says, "You can't do that." She says, "Why can't I do it?" She goes, "Because you're not black." And and she said, "But I am African and I am American." Mm-hmm. She's a true African American. Yeah. And, and 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 I was like, so they made her put down other, so they wouldn't take they wouldn't mess up the quotas. Wow. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I said, it's a funny story, but it's also sad at the same time because if anybody's an African American, you are. Right. You have the right to use that hyphen because now you are a citizen there. Now you're a citizen here. Mm-hmm. I can understand identifying with that. I was at, at a store one day and this girl I know, I said, I said, uh, do you consider yourself black or African American? I've known her for a while. And she, and she said, African American. I said, what about me? She was, you're white. I said, why am I a color and you're not? Yeah, and she goes, "Good point. Go ahead." And we just talked about it, mm-hmm. and that was right after I decided to do the Lowe's thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know. And and I said, because I told her, I said, "Black people don't exist." She goes, "Excuse me." I said, "I said you're like a, you know, a, a, a chocolate brownish." I said, "I really don't know the shade." I said, "But you're not black." Yeah. I said, "Nor am I white." And she goes, "Okay, you know." And I said, "We should celebrate our differences, not not argue them." Right. You know, and uh, she's okay. I mean, and I, and, and uh, every time I go in there, we, we talk about just anything, right? You know, for a couple of minutes, she was a manager at the store and just and stuff like that. It was, it was actually pretty cool, because no customers connect with people on that. No one asks them those things. You know, they all probably think I'm crazy anyway. But <laughs> well, oh, well, you, know, you are just, just a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> just a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly so. different. Hashtag exactly yes. different. <laughs> no, but I think that, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to the colors, you know, I think who, I, who was it recently? They were, uh, they were talking about, um, somebody was talking about, uh, white people talking about being colorblind and how that's really bullshit. And I, okay. I had mentioned, um, and I can't remember who it was that I was that that I had heard that through or or listened about, but um, and I I think I did it on one of my Mondays with Sensei Mish, but it was talking about well okay so you know I'm Caucasian I'm a white guy you know my parents brought me up to you know uh, basically judge somebody on their character mm-hmm. you know so I really don't care what color you are um, you know if I have to get into you know it's like okay well. You know, it's, you know, I'm going to talk about this person as a guy, you know, I'm not going to, unless of course I really have to mention skin color. I'm not because that's not important. You know, if you're an asshole, then I might be like, yeah. So this asshole I was talking to, yeah, because that's the character that I'm going to judge you on, you know? Um, and it was, uh, um, but it, so really when it comes to, yeah, of course. Yes, we see color because unless, of course, you're colorblind, you it's obvious that, you know, you have a different skin color than I do. But that's I'm not going to focus on that mm-hmm. because that's not important. Yeah, it's not. But for some reason, the narrative is out there that that is truly important because they wanted division. 
And people just celebrate their differences, not not use them as a, as a case of victimhood or anything else. I mean, this whole thing now they're trying to push with uh, um, not remuneration. What's the what's the uh, to get money back? Oh, uh, reparations. Reparations. Yeah. My family had to leave Ukraine, or they were going to kill them. Mm-hmm. Who's going to pay? Them? Who's going to pay them? You know. And, yeah. But you know what? All of them that left, they're all gone. They're all dead. Yeah. So uh, th- nobody owes me anything. Why does somebody owe uh, this other group something? Right. I, I mean, so and and who's going to know how much? Who's going to who's the, who, who's the one that's going to make the decision how much somebody gets? It, the whole thing is stupid. Yeah. You know, it's campaign promises that all these guys are trying. They're all trying to give away the farm that they don't own. Right. And they're making promises. You and know. and the argue you know the, also the argument that comes up is like okay well. Am I going to, you know, am I going to have to pay reparations just because I'm not black? I look at it this way. My family didn't come over here until after the Civil War, until after everybody was Mm -hmm. quasi-freed. So uh, I'm just going to claim exempt. (laughs) (laughs) My family wasn't involved. I'm exempt. (laughs) So, you know, it's like, it's, you know, my, uh, I think they're, they're hand workers in New York, but I don't really think... I'm really closely knit with those. I think I'm my my brand is more. Um, even though my grandfather came out of Tennessee, the hand workers that came across in 1836, I think it was 1836, um, really went up into into um, Ohio, and then some of them, and then of course you know because there was uh, uh, five siblings, um, and so of course they all kind of went off mm-hmm. in their own directions, but. Um, but it's like, you know, it's like that was how many generations ago? Mm-hmm. Who cares? Yeah. Is it really? Why is it? Why does it need to be an issue? Why? White guy asking. If you have, let me know. Change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and those and I think that's a legitimate reason. You know, it's like there's there's that one picture that's been going around the Internet. of uh, It's a black girl who. um uh, who's holding a who's holding a sign? She has a chain around her neck, like like she's a slave, and she's holding this sign about, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, basically I can't remember the words, but it's it's referencing the the reparations. But it's like, uh, so did you actually pick cotton, or were you actually a slave? You know, you know, if 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 that was your heritage, if that's where you you know your mm-hmm. you came from, okay. That's that's a fact. You didn't have the greatest, uh, you know, greatest history there. But are you a slave now? You know, why would why do we need to pay and who's going to pay that? Yeah. So, I mean, like Lisa, I know her parent, uh, her father's side comes out of Arkansas, but her other side comes out of uh, she's French Canadian. So do we just mm-hmm. so does my wife only get half? Well, it's similar. I think to, we'll have to investigate that. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's it's similar to you know people who can claim uh, Native American heritage. So if you have if you're a, I think it goes up to one sixteenth. I mean, Elizabeth Warren already failed that test. Yeah. But uh, was it one one thousand twenty fourth? And and uh, <laughs> she's not getting anything. And um, uh, but I think it's you have to. I think it goes up to one sixteenth. I don't think it goes past that. Then you may get. If you choose to, money to go towards college or or, right or something like that, um, but that's because the Native Americans were never U.S. citizens; they were always considered sovereigns. Mm. They were never naturalized. I don't think that, I still and I still don't think they were or are, unless they're off the reservation because the reservation is not U.S. land. I don't think because they have their own laws and, uh, and right. It is a separate nation, in es- you know, in essence. Hmm. So I don't know the legality of it, but I know that uh, uh, even federal, uh, uh, you know, the feds can't mm-hmm. go on the land. Right. And I knew that. They need permission for that. So, well, therefore, that's sovereign territory then. Yeah. And that would make sense. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the rules behind that, but. Yeah. Uh, and a little bit, but that's, but not a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. Let's see. 
I think enough. I think we've offended yes. enough people yeah, I'm sure we with have. that. Good. All right. So uh, one thing that we have been talking about. Um, I'd be offended if I'm not offended. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? I'm gonna and 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 I'm gonna take that offense. I'm gonna really keep it. I'm gonna dig it down deep inside to, to quote JP. That's one of my favorite videos, by the way. So and, you can save uh, it for later. So I can save it for later. So when I just I can feel just extra. You know, extra offended. <laughs> so, uh, but your OQ, uh, your offend, your offended quotient. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> What's your OQ? Oh, that's funny. Okay, I think we'll have to we'll have to play on that. Mm-hmm. But uh, but one thing that we've been talking about, um, it's not going to happen right away. But we were talking uh, uh, probably early 2020 mm-hmm. is doing a West Coast uh, West Coast tour mm-hmm. almost. And uh, I had thought about doing this with Bram, but uh, you and I have actually kind of uh, fleshed out a little bit. So, um, so any of watchers, if you guys are interested, we're still trying to come up with some details, figuring out like a time frame. But uh, we're uh, uh, we're going to start in uh, San Diego and just make our way north mm-hmm. and take uh, you know a week, two weeks, whichever, and then just kind of uh, go from school to school. You know, those that will have us and uh, and just, you know, do a two, two and a half hour seminar and then just kind of make it all the way up. And I mm-hmm. uh, figure we can start in San Diego and go all the way up to Vancouver, B.C. if they'll let us in the country. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think that would I think that would be really, really fun. Meet, uh, you know, just kind of spread the word of Q show. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and meet some really cool martial artists that we haven't ever met before. Well, and here's the other thing: everybody thinks. I mean, and, well, actually, don't you remember? I think one of the first times I came out here, uh, somebody didn't want to come to the seminar because they said all, all they do is knockouts or something like mm-hmm. that. And then I think you you told him, and I didn't knock anybody out. Yeah. And uh, um, it's it's not about that. I mean. That was, if you want to say that the knockout part of it was the hook to get people, you know, at, to looking at the end result. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I mean uh, that was for me originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, me, me too. And um, but there's so much more to it because we all went home and we were all trying to duplicate it and nobody could because there were other things happening that we weren't paying attention to. Right. And and that's. Uh, it's not going to work just because you whack them. I mean, and it's uh, one guy was telling me the other day from Canada. You know, there's certain words you can't say in Canada. Yeah, I know. Um, and uh, uh, the he said to me, he says, I've been hit by this one guy, and I've been hit by you. He goes, him, I felt like I got hit by a truck, and, I, and it hurt. And he goes, you, I just woke up on the ground, and I didn't really feel anything. And I said, because I said, the whole part of it is the finesse thing. Because what he said to me was, I want to... Uh, get more into this because I'm going to be promoted to a higher rank soon. And he says, I feel like a fraud. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, why? I said, you have, you're have a good martial artist. He goes, yeah, but if, we're, if I'm getting rank in this and I'm moving up to a higher level in this, then I should be able to do this. And I said, right. fair enough. I said, but you don't have to feel like a fraud. You just have to look, re-examine what you're doing. I mean, we always have to re-examine why didn't that work? Mm-hmm. Why didn't that work? What could I have done better on this? Is it, you know, body positioning? There's there's so many little things that go into the technique itself. It's not just there's the point, hit it in this way. No, and I mean a lot of it is how you think, what's going on in your head, and and, and all that stuff, the intent. You know, I mean, so th- there's times that um, women are nicer than men. It doesn't mean they're soft. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is that the compassion level, they don't want mm-hmm. to hurt anybody because right. it's more nurturing. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, um, you just offended some people. Yeah, I'm sure I did. <laughs> I, I'm sure I did. But, but, uh, uh, the, the, uh, I could, and because I'm getting flashbacks of when my mother and, and my sister, you know, if they would come to class or something like that, they didn't want to hit anybody. Mm-hmm. Or they would, they, they would say, I just really don't want to do it. I said, you can't care about them for a second. You just got to do it. Right. And I said, now that's hard. And that's hard, something that you have to mentally, you know, come to grips with and just do it and get it over with. 
because if it meant your life was on the line, you wouldn't hesitate. But the problem is you can't wait till your life's on the line. You got to practice. You got to do practice it now. It's like right. turning a light switch on and off. That's it. And I said, so if you can do that, then then uh, it gets installed in here, and you can just pull it up when when you need it. You know that that's that's where the training should evolve too. And somebody asked me recently, um, it's for a kids class, but he says, are you more is your school more about exercise and fitness or is it, or the teaching end? I said the teaching end. Because I can teach him a technique that we can do, you know, mm-hmm. for physical fitness and things like that. That'll be fun and, and all this stuff. But the purpose is to actually teach them how to move and how to learn. Not how not just jumping around. Because you can't teach people when they're constantly just jumping around. Right. Because they're not paying attention. Especially kids. You know, they have to learn how to we have to break it down and how to move and stuff like that. But but I now I'm to the point I can start to show them something and and they understand how to how to learn faster. Mm-hmm. That's really what it what I try to focus on. So and even yesterday, like like uh, you know, one of the guys at the at the class. I mean, he he didn't think he was going to be able to to. He thought they were maybe maybe too advanced for him, but when he was able to pick up everything because it was broken down in such a way, right? And it was simple. And he goes, "Oh, I can, and he realized I can do this." No, I think it's, uh, um, I, I like how you've kind of broken stuff down into, into simplistic things. Mm-hmm. Like even the seminar yesterday, it's, uh, um, you know, it's like, okay, I knew a lot of the moves, but just the way that your, the way that your focus has been, it's just like, oh, okay. Well, it's just, it's, it's showing the same thing, but just from a different point of view with mm-hmm. a little bit of nuance of, this is why we do this. Yeah, you know. So it makes it it makes it easier. I just try to you know to break it down that way. I mean, and I'm just doing it the same way I process it. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing it from a teaching point of view. That's how I figured out how to do it for myself. Right. By looking at it, so I'm like, oh, if I can figure it that way, why can't I just tell them to do it and then they'll internalize it? And mm-hmm. I was telling you yesterday, I think on the way on the way home, one of the cool right. things. Uh, when I was in Italy, probably maybe ten years ago, and this one guy, um, he was a uh, green belt or blue belt, maybe he was higher, but I don't, I don't remember. But he was he was doing a technique that I taught. You know, it was just a wrist lock takedown and how to follow up and how to you know maintain control as the person goes to the ground, right? Etc. Not take him down and then try to do something else. You're taking them down so that they fall into the next movement you know and and lock and uh, uh, he was you know obviously speaking Italian but he was explaining exactly I didn't teach him Mm -hmm. other than in seminars and stuff like that right and and he was explaining exactly like I taught John Luca and he but he was doing it in Italian not necessarily using my words but I understood what he was telling him Mm -hmm. and I was like that's pretty cool and I said to John Luca afterwards I said he did that exactly I said that was that was like perfect but he also explained it to the guy to, to exactly what to do mm-hmm. and it was it was for me it was gratifying because it showed that I was able to pass something on and the language doesn't matter right and that was the one one problem I had with trying to figure out how to market different DVDs and video content and things like that it costs too much to translate everything to do all this stuff I don't mm-hmm. have that many hours in the day Right. And and um so I just I may I tried to make it as simple as possible so that people could learn it. Yeah. And I didn't think I could, but I was working with a strategy group at one point and they helped me understand they saw something that I didn't see. Okay. And then once they explained it to me and how to break it, I knew how to break it down. Mm-hmm. I had to figure out how to articulate it. In more in like the class structure that I that I that I developed and 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 uh, and how I break things down. And one of the guys in Australia was teaching. He said, "Well, what do I teach?" I said, "Just take the first two modules. Just, mm-hmm. You know, each each module has like six classes in it. Make the first module or two modules because they're similar, but they teach different points and some different techniques." And and he, so he took all that with him. They, uh, they each taught for like an hour and a half, and he goes, I couldn't even get out of the first two. 
because everyone was having such a good time for two classes. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the teacher was like, that was great. You know, and he goes, where'd you get that from? So we showed him the form. And he, all he did was use the, it's a, it, it, the PDF that comes with it is the lesson plan. He, okay. just show, he just showed that and he was like, and a lot of people take it and they print that out and they just keep that. If they need to refer to something, if they don't have internet access, they just open that up. I said, okay, we're going to do this today. That's it. Makes cool. it simple. Yeah. Now, how do they, uh, how do people sign up for that? Just go to QShowInstitute.com. You can get uh, 30 days free. Try it out. No pressure. I'll pester you with some emails, but those are all automated and, and stuff like that. But So it's really not you pestering. Yeah. It's the computer. Yeah. So, but you know, you, if you want to do it, great. If you don't want to do it, uh, you know, it, it is what it is and, and you move forward. But you don't, you don't have to test. Uh, some people want to test. They want the rank and stuff like that, but you don't have to test. Mm -hmm. If they want to, great. Uh, that's fine. But some people just want to keep it to themselves, and, and they're, they're training in various groups. I, not that I don't care. It's, it's just I'm okay with whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. it's, you're doing this for you. You're not doing it for me. You know, and, and, uh, uh, and there's different types of memberships and things, and things like that. And it's just it's, it's pretty inexpensive. For, for it is, um, uh, and you can you know you can use it how you want. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned uh, you mentioned rank. And I think uh, either earlier today or yesterday, you mentioned something about uh, somebody wanting to go for black belt. Is that something that's that's possible through your? Yeah, yeah, they can they can do that as as they as they you know go up through the classes and stuff like that. They can test for it. I mean, it's actually easy. I mean, you know, look, we we all uh, probably some people are going to get mad at me, but but you know, yeah. huh? I was going to say if they're not already I was like, mad, yeah, at me. it is. <laughs> um, mad or offended. Um, most schools use, uh, in essence, we probably or we probably don't need the charge for belt testing. Mm -hmm. I do, you know, for for and, and and but because of the time that's involved in it, mm -hmm. as far as doing all the other stuff, graphics for the certificates and 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 adding all doing all this all this extra stuff over here and ordering stuff, picking things up, all that takes time out of doing other things. Right. And and um. um but when, and I'm not talking about online stuff, you know, because that people submit videos, and right. again, that's a time thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it, I can I can look at somebody. It's you remember the show Name That Tune? Yeah. You could just look at them in the first first couple minutes, a minute, you know, one minute, two minutes, and 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 realize, okay, you know, I can see how they move. Right. What do you need four hours for that? Right. The reason that we need four hour testing is to give them their money's worth. To justify charging a couple hundred dollars for that rank, mm -hmm. that's where that comes from. Well, see, like for like for for me, the color belts, uh, lower ranks, I don't charge anything because the belt, you know, only cost me a mm -hmm. few bucks. I do charge for black belt, but that's because of their certificate. They, mm -hmm. I mean, they get something the the belt it, the belt itself. Yeah. With the embroidery that costs a hundred dollars, you know, yeah. and you get a McGee and all that. Kind and of and stuff, that's what know? I mean. All of that so, stuff. So all that stuff. Yeah. It's like yeah, so so I, that makes sense. Well, there you was know? you know there was uh, one guy wanted to charge me uh, money to to recognize my rank, and so in in Q show, <laughs> and uh, I said, well, your first one's free, and I said, well, oh, thank you, I guess, and he gave it to me, and so he gave me a first don certificate, and I said, well. I took it. I put it away. I have it somewhere at home. I don't even know it's buried under something. Mm -hmm. And and uh, he goes, then you just pay two hundred dollars a year, you know, for the other ones until you're caught up to where you are today. I said, so. You're, I said, so. What you're telling me is, in uh, six or seven years, I'm going to be equal to the rank I am today and fourteen hundred dollars lighter in the wallet. <laughs> and he was like, well, I said, uh, well, what? I said, give me the justification for that. Well, this guy is recognized. He said, not in Q show. Yeah. So what does it matter? I said, having that recognition, will that make me any more any more income? You know, strictly from a business point of view? And he goes, well, probably not. I said, well, then why am I spending that money? Yeah. 
I mean, just and just strictly speaking from a business point of view, you know, and and I said so. I, I to me, I don't need it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. And he got mad because I talked out about it. So, but not every person wants to do that. Well, and you know, like there's there's other people that I've that I've talked to. It's like, oh, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I talked to I talked to so and so, and and you know, they they really think that I should be uh, an an X degree black belt, and they're like, yeah, we'll we'll give you one. That'll be eight hundred dollars. <laughs> mm, don't think so. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't need it that bad. You yeah. know, I, I haven't. I, I love me well, but not that bad. And you know, it's when he was telling me the story. It's like, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, if I, if, if I'm going to, if I, you know, for me as a student, if I'm going to go, okay, I want, you know, my goal is for this rank and I'm going to work towards it. I'm going to test. Okay. I've got, you know, I, I don't, as a student, I don't mind putting out the money because that's a goal that I want mm-hmm. to uh, achieve. I said, but if somebody just wants to come up and be like, okay, well, you know, here's your next rank. Sweet. Great. And then they want to attach another, uh, uh, you know, a, a cost to it. It's like, mm, I don't know. What am I paying for? <laughs> well, here's, here's, I, how, you here's know, how I look at it. Putting the signature on the document, the signature is actually worth a lot of money. And well, not being egotistical from a government perspective, right? your signature is worth a lot of money. The only thing that makes your check cash is your signature on it. Mm-hmm. So when you put a signature on that, that could be considered, you know, they can turn that into an instrument. Mm-hmm. You know, if people understood how to do that, a negotiable yeah. instrument, and and uh, so, you know, that that's really how I look at it. I'm not going to give it to them, you know, because I do value the signature. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I actually just sent, I sent a form to uh, to the IRS, changing my status and something, and I told them, this is why I'm doing this. My signature is worth a million dollars to you guys because mm-hmm. they are monetizing our signatures on the back end that we don't know right. about, but that's a different story for a different day. Yeah. So, and I, I guess I could, I could see it from that, from that standpoint, but I think that, um, at least from, I don't know, my, from my perspective, um, a lot of these organizations are just handing out, uh, handing out belts to make money. That's right. Yeah. You know, and that's what I, that's what, and that's what I was talking about before about, you know, running the school mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It, it, and how you know you you become a prostitute, you know. I have kids asking me. It, some people, some schools have regular belt testing every three months. Right. And it's a nice revenue generator. However, what if the kids aren't ready? Mm-hmm. Are you actually doing them a disservice at that point? Are you going to say that that well you're a bad teacher if they're not ready? You see, our our job is not to teach. Our job is to create an environment that's conducive to learning. And this is from what I learned from some financial people. There is no teaching. There's learning or not learning. Your job is to facilitate an environment that that helps uh, the the student learn, because you can I can put food down in front of my dog. If the dog's not hungry, she's not going to eat. Right. I can give you all the information. If you're not ready for it. Now, one of the beauties of this is that you can you can teach the same thing every single day, and they're just like watching a movie. You see a little bit different twist on things mm-hmm. once you become aware of stuff, you know, and and so so uh, you know just little things like that. Once you understand one little principle, all of a sudden it opens up a lot of other doors, and now you're looking at everything differently. Even if it's the same thing, it's just like no different than if you just change your glasses and put on sunglasses. Mm-hmm. Well, your view of the world is going to be different at that right. point. No, I totally understand that. Yeah. And that's sometimes what we have to do is we, we have to change change our, our you know, our our lenses, even if we don't wear glasses. We just have to change it changes the perspective just by doing that. Well, I think when when you first came out, um, you know, I had you know, I was looking at stuff at a certain perspective and you came out, taught a seminar, and I started seeing I was like, Oh, wait a minute. I kinda knew that already, but now you know, it was, it was one of those where it did. It just kind of opened up. I think you still use that quote somewhere. Yeah. Where it was just like, you know, it's like it, it, it was it was almost like, okay, information I already knew, but now I know it. Mm-hmm. Because now I'm actually, it's letting me see stuff that wasn't there before. So, yeah. I just learned something recently with regards to like the Declaration of Independence. 
Yeah. Well, the deck. So, so apparently, the it was the British East India Company that owned everything, mm-hmm. and in this country because it was developed in 1609 by King James, right. King James Bible, and um, so they were over here working on behalf of the company, not on the crown. The crown owned the company, but the company was the one doing the, the work. Right. Okay. To insulate the crown from liability, and and. Uh, uh, the Declaration of Independence was us declaring independence, even though it said, talked about King George in there and the abuses in there. It was they were breaking the contract with the British East India Company. And then from there, we developed the article. You know, we went and had the American Revolution, blah, 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 Articles of Confederation, and the Constitution. Mm-hmm. If you read the opening paragraph of the Constitution, it's the opening paragraph of a contract because Constitution comes from the root word constitutor, which means one who owes another a debt because we owed the King of England money. Mm. And if you read the Treaty of 1883, the Treaty of Paris, uh, 1783, it explains it all right there too. You know, he even called, the King even called himself the chief, the Prince Elector of the United States. Maybe the Prince Elector of the United States of America, because those are two United States, United States of America, two different entities. And uh, but it was the same thing. It's about looking at some the same thing that we've been brought up, whether mm-hmm. it's martial arts wise or history wise. All of a sudden, looking at it totally different, going, "Whoa, wait a minute! This puts a totally different spin on it." Right. You know, and and stuff like that. We'll get into what I do. How I use the post office now too. One day, mm-hmm. the post office is older than the United States. Yeah. And the post office is a bank. And the only place to get money orders backed by gold is the United States Post Office. That's why some like if you're a utility bill. Mm-hmm. If you if they if sometimes if you if if they don't like your method of payment like your checking account because you bounce checks and they say we won't accept this anymore, you have to give us a money order from the post office. Why can't it be from the bank? Cuz the post office is backed by gold. Our money is not backed by gold. Right. So, okay. Interesting. Okay. Left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> Left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> we could go down that route, but that's yeah. not for no, that's no, for no. another time. So, well, looking at the time, it's been a little over an hour. Okay, I think. So, uh, I think it would be a good place to stop. Until next time. Okay, okay. So, all right. So, if you uh, thank you for tuning in. If you still have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Um, uh, all the little links and other stuff that we've kind of referenced here today will be in the uh in the um uh the description below and of course comment i want to hear your feedback you know did we offend any of you do, so. do, do somebody need a blue <laughs> shirt with a snowflake <laughs> on the front um but let's uh, make antarctica green again yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh but yeah so uh subscribe if you want to know anytime i uh upload a new video hit the little bell and um oh they have to subscribe and hit the bell well they could subscribe if you subscribe then they just you know they're they're considered a subscriber i know but if you hit the bell you get notified when new new content is put up yes so they hit the bell they get the notifications so there are some people that i've hit the little bell and some people i haven't hit the little bell so it's your choice make the right choice (laughs) (laughs) All right, so until next time, we are out. Cool, thanks.